Robert Sala fired as the Jets head coach, Steve. I thought he'd at least make it through the season. They fired him right now. It's wild. This seems to happen. Let's just say this. I don't know why, but it seems to happen to a lot of coaches when they're coming back across the pond from London uh, for some reason after a London game. It is a it is a thing in the NFL. It has happened numerous times. Um, this is a team that we thought, Steve, had a lot riding on this season, they right? Do. For Robert Sala, for a Super Bowl window that's about this big with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, the move you made to go get him. You'd say that this offense, as we mentioned, stagnant, lacking creativity mm. are some of the things that I hear. Bro, I'm sitting there. <laughs> Tell me this. I mean, you, you're in shock. I'm not everything in shock, I actually. is riding on this year. I'm, I'm not in. I know, yeah, but, but didn't you think they'd get the year to see if they could do it? No, I did Here's why. I, you look at okay. you go backwards and look at some of the coaching staff guys, some of the coaching staff. Some of those guys took other jobs. They they became they were maybe a DB coach that went to another team that DB coach. They didn't get upgraded. Those guys left because they realized the writing was on the wall. One of the biggest things that I, I, I've always wondered is Robert Salas got credit for running that defense, got credit for being such a defensive minded coach. However, he wasn't really calling the defense, and I don't understand why he never promoted his defensive coordinator, gave him his credit that was due on doing that. And I think that has to do with a coach wanting to make sure that they can still create and have a job for themselves. If this guy, if this job doesn't work out as a head coach, they can fall back into the coordinator role that really got them the uh, that got them the eventual head coaching job. So it's going to be interesting to see how the New York Jets improve. I would also say there's this has been brewing, right? We have seen it publicly from one press conference to the next press conference. Robert Sala gets up there. Maybe Aaron's cadence is just a little too much, and we got to dial it back. Aaron gets up there. No, I think the cadence is fine. I think we got to correct our, our, our mistakes and hold everybody accountable. Mm -hmm on this offense to make sure that they can handle the cadence that Aaron Rodgers, obviously he's going to say that because it's been one of his superpowers as an offensive general at the line it's of been, scrimmage. How many times has he drawn guys off sides and gotten free plays, Steve, because been, of that cadence? It's been unbelievable. Worked. How much do you think, and let's just say what it is, the friction that we have seen between Robert Saul and Aaron Rodgers played a, a role in this departure of Robert Saul? I don't think it's the, fr I, well, yes, it is the friction, but it's not the friction of Aaron Rodgers doesn't like Robert Salas. I think Robert Salas has done a – I don't think he's done an effective job of managing the team, throwing your quarterback – first of all, you throw your quarterback under the bus in the offseason to say that he has an unexcused absence in minicamp when he, you already knew he wasn't going to be there. Yeah, break that down for me, Steve. What, what, what did happen in the offseason? So when you have what they call your exit physical, the league and the teams have you fill out a little piece of paper that says, hey, if you have any plans of traveling, you don't have to have the exact date. But if you have a range, that will be good because if we call you seeking something, whether it be a drug test or something that may be a, uh, with the league, and you happen to be out of the country, they just like to know what's your future plans in the offseason. Mm -hmm. I've done it. A lot of players do it. Hey, from here, thinking about going here and there. I know Aaron had his big trip scheduled and told the team, but yet Silas comes up and says, it's unexcused. You didn't have to say that. You, you knew he was going on that vacation. Interesting. And to say that it was unexcused, Again. man, that, that just kind of shows like just the friction and I don't know, I, I think more of the, the selfishness of the head coach trying to say, hey, no one's above the team. But if I already give you a heads up, I mean, that's, that's the offseason is what the offseason is for. You, you, you must maintain staying in shape, but you're also given an opportunity to do some things uh, financially where... Uh, your rewards have given you, but you also 
you do endorsements, you do commercials, you do all kind of things for the off season, and all of a sudden that's you didn't know about that, man. I, I don't. I'm not buying that. I, I don't. I don't buy that at yeah. all. That's that's tough. This is the first time in in his 25 years. Woody Johnson is is firing a coach mid season. Steve Robert Sala. I'm looking at this right now. 20 and 36 uh, during his time um, with the Jets. And and do you move make this move at two and three? I mean, this is early in the year that you're hoping something changes with the expectations that we listed. I think you move in this direction right now because you feel that you're kind of at a dead end. And you know it's not going to improve with him at the head coaching position. So you got to just cut ties now. You, 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 it's, it's almost, you know, do you let it go all the way in, in the tank? Man, that, that fan base is not going to allow that be, just because that team is too good. Man. Well, it will not be Nathaniel Hackett. It will be Jeff Albrich, the defensive coordinator, who's going to be the interim head coach. Nathaniel Hackett will still run the offense alongside of Aaron Rodgers, so he will not get an opportunity to slide back in and, and uh, show the NFL, the other 31 teams out there, that he, uh, with another crack at the, at the head coaching position. So it will be the defensive side of the ball uh, that will go and take over the uh, head coaching duties. But the, the interesting part about it is, Steve, it's not just – the offense that has been, like we mentioned, just that's maybe one of the worst games. It is the worst game we've seen Aaron Rodgers play, this previous one, in a Jets uniform. Um, we've seen the issues with the way the offense has worked. We did think they were going to be able to hang their hat a little bit on the defense as well. You look at all the drama, though, that's been going on with this team on the defensive side as well. I, Hassan Reddick is still not there. I mean, these are some of the things that, that, are, that have been surrounding the Jets not just recently, four months. You still you made a trade for Hassan Reddick and he still is not playing for your football team. And we are into week six. Yeah. That one is a head scratcher because you know why he was traded. He was traded for, you know, in in hopes of a new contract. And I'm you do it. I, yeah, you need a you need a guy who's motivated. You need a guy who's mm -hmm. who wants to recommit. So having him show up first. The whole reason you traded for him is because you knew the the, the contract situation, and you knew yeah. you needed a, a, some more pass rushers. So if you decide you don't want to pay him, I don't know why you're shocked. Yeah, Jeff Ulbrich, I, I will say this: he is really well liked. Yeah, he's a great dude, man. Uh, hey, I don't even play defense, but you, I, I roll you know? with Jeff. He's he's a great dude. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Um, so let's see what ends up happening uh, because he is. What uh, he's How about this? Let's throw now. this one out there. What happens if they okay. go on this like unbelievable run? Hey, we saw it with AP last year. Like, if you can win the room, yeah. Tony Pierce was, was named. He got the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you believe in the cultural shift that the new guy can come in and do in the interim process. That's crazy. It can happen. And guess what? He's got a lot of games. <laughs> He's got a lot of games to try to create that culture. This isn't just like a handful. This is a this is a Christmas time, mid December type of decision. Yeah, but see, I don't I don't believe we are just into October. I don't believe this is a he has to change a culture. I think he's gonna keep the culture what it is. I think the message is actually not going to be watered down and switched every week. I think that I think I believe mm. that that's going to be the difference. I mean, you look at the Jets and Robert Solis and what was going on every week. It was constantly something, and it wasn't necessarily from the players. It was the inconsistency of the head coach throwing up mixed messages throughout the off season, throughout the during the season. So that tells me um, he doesn't need to change the culture. He needs to really. Uh, make sure the players can really trust that the head coach won't fl flip the script every week, depending on the outcome. Yeah. To wrap this up, I'll just make one final point, Steve. If you do it this early into the season, what does that say about ownership? Because should, should you have started the season with him? Was, should this have been a decision that should have been made in the offseason? Here's the issue with that is in the offseason, you have conversations. And in those conversations, you and I both know, just as, as you know, being husbands, being uh, fathers, and you have these conversations and you know you walk away and things are like this and then they walk away and they come back and it's like, what happened? So I, I think that was the case is where when your job is on the line at times, you're going to say things that pop up in your head that may not be necessarily 
what you believe or fully committed on, but you're also not trying mm-hmm. to lose that check either. And so I think you get painted in a corner yeah. and you start to you, you start to you start writing checks and making commitments that then as the season goes on early and that pressure mounts that you realize it's it's not it's you can't do it. For him to get fired after the Minnesota game, here's the here, here's the problem. Is that because you had a real you had an expectation that you were going to beat the Minnesota Vikings? Or is it that the Minnesota Vikings are showing you with some good coaching, some the right uh, people in place, you can do some things mm. with, with, with less than or coach? I'm not really sure because over the last couple of years under Robert Salas, they've had some dynamic football players. They've had some good players. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, man, mm-hmm. it's just not working out. And how they've handled things just hasn't been great. Hey, to add insult to injury, Steve, you know who was quarterbacking that team of the Minnesota Vikings that just went and beat you over there in mm. London? It was your former number two overall pick in uh, San Francisco. Uh, but it, uh, how, hold on now. <laughs> Robert Solis didn't pick saying. him, so let's, let's give him a little bit of grace on no, that. No, he did not. No, I he just did want not. to make I'm sure. Just, just got to point that out. the different things that are together. Robert Sala was not yeah, part of that. Patients were growing a little bit thin uh, at the end of last year. That's why I was curious about you give it one more year. I guess you give you it give one, it one more, more year, year if they're healthy winning. Aaron Rodgers. Yep. There was, and, you, and you didn't get a chance to see this, this Aaron Rodgers um, plan come to fruition last year. You saw it for four snaps. So maybe you, you give Robert Sala another year, even though ownership was kind of like at the end of the last year going, I'm not sure if this is exactly – where we want to be, and and then they end up pulling the trigger early here at two and three, um, and we'll see where the Jets go uh, from here moving mm. forward. But this is this is obviously not Wowzers. Uh, what Woody Johnson or anybody I wanted with the Jets. Wowzers is a is a really good uh, good way to put it, Steve.